Hey Yarn Lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Friday, December the 16th, 2022 and this is video number 169. How are you all doing? I hope you're well and staying safe. As you can tell, I'm feeling very festive here. The tree's up, it's decorated me and hubby put all the decorations around the place so it's looking very Christmassy. In this household we celebrate Christmas. And it will be my last catch up on what I've been up to in the community and talking about my finished projects as well as what I've been working on. So in the course of the next week or two that we have left of the year, you'll probably see me do a couple of more unboxings before the year is out and then we'll be back, we'll be into 2023. So I wanna wish from our home to everyone's home who celebrate Christmas or another occasion, the very best and uh, that you have a wonderful end of the year. But so what have I got for you in this episode? I've got a little bit of show and tell on finished objects, some works in progress, as well as some happy mail. And I also have a what I've been up to in the, the community we've mo moved into me and my husband. So I hope that you'll stick around and enjoy that. All the fun Yarny stuff will be up the front. And if you want to stick around to watch the other goodies about the community events and a bit of an excursion that we went on, please stick around. You're more than welcome to. If you're happening across this channel for the very first time, I set this channel up to talk about all of my Yarny adventures, like in knitting, crocheting, a little bit of yarn dyeing, as well as where I purchased my yarn from and acquisitions like tools, all that sort of fun stuff. So if that thing's of interest, please stick around. And for all the people who have come back, I wanna say thank you so much for making my 2022 so wonderful. And I looked at the numbers of people who have come to join the channel and I'm absolutely floored. Now, there are a few key people there to, to shout out about helping me along the way. And my very good friend, Crystal over at Bag A Day, have, has uh, mentioned me a lot of times on her channel. So I wanna say thank you, Crystal. Uh, I love you so much. So I am always heart touched when you're wearing a garment of mine or you shout me out. So I just wanna show my love back by saying thank you so much. And everyone else in the Yarna community who have always like been there in my corner when I have had uh, I guess some questions and also they shout me out as well on their video so I always want to say thank you to my YouTuber friends out there and family so thank you so much and I'm going to kick off because there's a lot to get through I want to first show you some of the ideas that I had as Christmas presents in a previous podcast I did mention that I'm going to crank out on my Addy Knitting Express machine 19 scarves I had six done in my last episode and I'm happy to say that I've ha I've made another six. So I wanna show you what I've got done and some of them are scrappy where I've used uh, different balls of yarn that I had leftovers and also one skein balls. And then I got into the idea of just cranking out whole cakes all in one go so that it would make it easier and I could get through the projects quicker and only because of the time crunch of I've got to get these 19 scarves done. There are 19 pe people coming for Christmas Day and I've got a little bit of a game in mind where uh, the presents or the scarves will be wrapped up individually and every guest that is going to the dinner will have a chance to go and lucky dip one of the wrapped up gifts. They'll open up, they'll see their scarf that they have, some of the scarves inside of the wrapping paper will have uh, carols. So they will sing for the scarf, sing the carol, and Chad, my husband, will do a playlist where it'll have the digital playlist on the television display, and it'll have the, uh, the words so that everyone can join in. And I'm thinking I might do modern Christmas carols instead of the classics. So like Lady Gaga, Tony Bennett, or, um, Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, uh, Michael Bublé. So maybe shorter versions so that we're not there the whole night. You know, five songs takes around half an hour to sing. So 
uh, cut it down to maybe about 30 seconds per song. So here are the scarves that I cranked out on my Addy Express. Now, I was thinking about doing a bit of a tally on the scarves that I'm gonna be showing. So these six will be represented down below in the description box. And what I'm gonna do is talk about it from one to five, rate the yarn that I've cranked out by hand on the Addy Express. Five being the most friendly for cranking. And I say cranking by hand because some people use a drill and it may be a different scenario altogether because when you're cranking by hand, it's a little bit more gentler, I think, on the yarn. So um, I'll rate them out of five and I'll also tell you what yarns I've got and what they're called. If you wanna go down and have a look if you're interested because you have an Addy knitting machine on using some of the yarns that I had um, found very helpful or friendly and those that weren't so friendly. So <laughs> that might be interesting. So here's the first one. This is the one whole cake. I did not use a scrap on this. It was like, or I didn't join scraps together. It was the one whole cake. And I loved it because all the colors were worked out for me. And I didn't have to worry about joining yarn or, you know, skipping stitches and then having to re-crank the piece. So it was just cranking, cranking, cranking. This one was the Hirschner's Pastry Plus, a three weight yarn. Right now it's sitting at around, I'm going to say 12, 12 feet long. And that's way, way too long for a scarf. I'll just show you. So what I've been doing is I've been closing up one of the ends using Chris, uh, Kitchener stitch. And then I will do a safety line in, uh, in two sections. So one on either side of maybe three rows in between and then cut the yarn and unravel it and then stitch the yarn and to close it with the Kitchener stitch. So I will actually cut off three feet because I don't want it to be 12 feet long scarf. I want it to be something like even an eight foot scarf will be nice or a nine foot scarf. So I'll take off the excess, but look how many times it goes around. <laughs> I mean, someone who likes chunky scarves or lots of wraps, uh, I mean, that they could love a scarf that's like 12 feet long, but I don't know. I think it would get in the way, it'd get tangled. So, but I do like it. I love the colors. And I'll just show you the, uh, as I show you the top of my head, which I know that you really love seeing. Um, this is the Hirschner's Pastry plus band, ball band of the cake. And the co color that I'm wearing is called Frosted. So that's it there, a three weight yarn. I'll just take it off because it is quite warm. And I'll show you the next one. The next one that I have is another Hirschner's Pastry Puff. And this one is called Pomegranate. So, these are the colors in the pomegranate, a little different from the other one. Frosted was more of the, uh, what did it have? Like purple, there was a uh, cyan blue, a mauve, and like a green color. There's five colors in the breakdown of each of the pastry puffs. So this one has orange, there's like a salmon or peach color, then more of a pink, vibrant color here like almost orange pink and this one is a like a burgundy and then more of a standard red and they're all speckly so you can see a little bit of specks in the pomegranate color way now this one was what i did what I, what i was planning to do with the with the frosted color so i'd close it off with kitchener stitch found the length that I liked, which is I think eight feet long. And then I cut the bit in between here using my safety line. And this is the bit that I took off. So you can see that that's probably around two and a half to, I wouldn't say two and a half feet that I took off. 
So I've got this one that I can kitchen a stitch onto the other scrappy bits and make a scarf as well. So this is scarf number two in the series. Scarf number three is this one here. And this one was all scraps that I used. Well, not really scraps, one balls of, or I had uh, some in here that were Red Heart, some were Bernay Super Value and Tensile Yarn. So there was also one in here, this navy blue, which was a yarn be yarn that was gifted to me from a wonderful uh, person that I met here on YouTube. And I will link all the gifts that people have given me down in the description box as well. So this navy blue one was a gift. And yeah, so I just repeated it. Navy blue, brown, this speckly gray, marl kind of effect. Back to navy blue, then this green, and so on and so forth. So this is my third one, and I'll put it on for you. Again, it's around, I'm gonna say maybe seven to eight feet long, so enough to do a few, a few wraps. There we go. I really like it. So yeah, the next one that I have here is one that I had cranked out because the colors were inspired by Setter's Calendar Cow for 2022 for the month of August. Now, the celebrated crafter and YouTuber was the one and only Z or Zelda, and she has a YouTube channel. Hi Z! And it is Zelda NRJ3, and I will link her channel down below. And these are the colors here. So in her photograph that she submitted for the month of August was a grassy field and a little bit of woodlands behind. And then the cityscape was further in the distance. And lovely Z was sitting on a rock in the foreground and she was wearing her her drapey mesh crochet top. It was really stunning. So I've got here a combination of James, James C. Brett's marble in this wonderful lime green colorway for the grassy area and spun colors in a name I can't remember what was on the band, but it was something like meadows or woodlands, something to that effect. So it's got browns, for the um, or autumnal colors for the little forest area. And then this was Lion Brands Glacier Bay in the Heartland series. So a nice, they were all kind of like nice four weight yarns, some a little bit lighter, some a little bit dark, uh, heavier than uh, the standard four that you see. And I also had this gray in Lion Brands Respun. And the color was, I don't know, some sort of standard gray. So I will rate each of those yarns in this number for scarf down below as well through the Addy Express. So what do you think? I really like it. They almost look like little picture postcards of landscapes in each of the little vignettes. Yeah. So I'll put that on. There we go. Wonderful, wonderful. So I hope that is uh, a good celebration of the artist C. The next one I have, number five, is, I'll leave that one for the last. This one here, number five, is mostly the gray from the respun from Lion Brand. And it is considered a four weight yarn, but it's quite fine and um, I just used the one color and then towards the end I did striping and this color here is the Lion Brand Heartland in the colorway Glacier Bay. So I did a couple of stripes, I think one, two, three, four, five, five stripes at the end and again five stripes I hope, one, two, three, four, five, yes. And just to show you how I can wear this one. Oh. I should try a different way of wrapping it around. So some people wrap it and then poke it through and that's how they wear it, like a, a tie almost. So 
I really like that as well. And that's number five. So my number six scarf comes with an extra hat. So I'll show you the scarf first and then I'll show you the hat. This is a stripey scarf that I use using Lion Brand Scarfy as the uh, teal silver colorway. So it starts, I alternate a color and then I put in back in the Lion, the Scarfy yarn. So Scarfy yarn, another color, Scarfy yarn, another color, Scarfy yarn, another color. So it kind of breaks up that fade that goes through the teal to the silver color. And the other yarns that I used with it was Bernays Cozy Soft, I think it's called. Cozy Soft in the colorway um, Autumnal Gold or Autumnal Yellow. And this one here is Aruba in Red Heart Super Saver. This one here is Carnival, which is a Australian yarn that my mum sent me. And the colorway I believe is called Baby Blue. And then I just alternated them throughout the piece. Now the panda was a three weight, so it was a little bit thinner, but I like the color so much in the series that I used it. And as you can see, it does do a little wobble. It wobbles around uh, the edges. It sort of like goes thicker where there's the uh, scarfy and then goes a little in indentation where the carnival yarn is because of the size difference. But I didn't mind that. I thought the colors rule in this situation and the little divot, I didn't care about so much. So yeah, that's number six. So this is the little extra that I created because I did crank out a little bit too much of the yarn. So the tube was extra long and I made myself a hat. Here it is here. Da, 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 da. Ah, so cool. And this pom-pom, I haven't made a pom-pom in years. I think I did make little pom-poms when I first started my YouTube and I was putting them on uh, kids, some kids hats, but they ended up being this big. And this one here, I just cut out cardboard pieces and I made myself a huge, huge pom-pom. I don't even know what the circumference is. It's gotta be around 10 inches. Like that is a huge pom-pom. I love it. It's not as good as the pom-poms that I see Pamela making from Pamela's cro Knit and Crochet Corner, but uh, oh, she is the pom-pom making guru. But uh, this is not bad for a, not having done one for a long time. So same yarn inside of each of the, the uh, hat and the scarf. The only difference was when I pulled off the, the, the little end bit when I cut it off, I had life stitches and I knitted, hand knitted my ribbing. So one by one ribbing on onto the edge uh, of the life stitches. So I could roll that up and yeah, the pom-pom I did was I just attached it with the yarn ends that hold the pom-pom pieces together. And I uh, sewed them through and just tied a bow in it so that if I want to take off the pom-pom and put something else on or wash the hat, I can protect the pom-pom by taking it off and removing it. And in here, I ran out of the scarfy yarn. So I had to add in uh, the another yarn from loops and threads. It's like a jeans washy color. So I just put that in there to give it um, more fullness because I didn't have enough of the scarfy yarn in the end, but I used it all up. I love it. I think it's so cool. I might wear it actually for the rest of the, of the uh, video. So let's put this back. Those are the six. And again, I'll put all of the ratings out of five down below in the description box. Moving right along, I think I don't have any more finished works, but I do have some works in progress that I got to catch you up on. So let me go and grab them and I'll clear this away. I'm back again and I have my whips with me. 
This one that I'm going to show you was one that I missed out on showcasing in my last show and tell. And there was a commenter saying, what happened to that cardigan that you were knitting for Chad? You know, that brown one? Has it been put away as an FO or, or a UFO, I should say? And no, I just forgot to showcase it in my last podcast. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, it was a pattern called the Bergen by, who's it by? Martin Story. So I got it in this publication here by Rowan and it is called Simply Shapes Pure Wool Worsted. And there are nine designs in here by Martin Story. The pattern that I'm creating is this one here. And I showed Chad the pattern and I said, oh, that will look so neat on you. And I had some yarn for it. I showed him the yarn. I said, you've got a lot of blue and green and gray in your wardrobe. What about a nice brown? And so he liked it. He liked the color that I chose. And this is how far I've gotten on the back panel. I believe the last time you saw it, I was showing you the waistband and that was where I was at but I've done almost the whole back panel now. There is this wonderful texture at the top and it'll be pretty much where my vest is sitting right now with the change of color. That's where all of this texture will be. And uh, just doing my arm shaping around the, around the arm and I have about this much more to do then I can start on the two front panels. So I'm really loving the way it's working up. This yarn is beautiful and squishy. It's not a soft yarn, as I mentioned in the preview of the start of the project. It is more of a robust yarn. Uh, not to say that it's itchy. It doesn't pinch my skin at all. It just has that firmness to it. I don't know how to describe it, but it uh, sits nicely on my skin without pinching. And it's not itchy, but it does have that solid factor to the yarn itself and great for an outer shell garment for ex for example if you're wearing a shirt underneath and you have pockets or you have uh your shirt is not laying flat you won't get all of that showing through with this type of yarn it seems to be more of a um a sturdy yarn if i use something softer it would have shown the bulging and all the rippling and the folds in the shirt underneath. So I thought this is a great outer shell type of yarn to use. So I'm using, oh, I've caked up a few here. It is called Kensington Yarn. I purchased it from Little Knits and is that upside down? Yes, it is. Goodness gracious. So Kensington Yarn and it's by Haiku. It's made in New Zealand and it's considered a four weight yarn. Really, really nice. So that's it there. The color is called Lamington. It's a dessert in Australia and New Zealand. I really love Lamingtons. And as you can tell, there's little specks in it and I love the way it's working up. Has a bit of elasticity to it. So when you're, I'm working, it's quite nice for the rhythm. And as it runs through your fingers, it feels really lovely. No splitting involved in this. I thought it was quite a nice match with my Chagu needles. And I'm using a 4.5 for the body. I did use the four millimeters for the, uh, for the waistband. And I overcompensated for the type of cord that I was going to use for with my interchangeables and I chose a 40 inch one. I think it was just available. So that's what I'm using for the, for the needles. Really love the project. Again, that's how the specs are working out in the, in the yarn. Yeah. The next project that I have is also one that I don't need to do any spoiler alerts for anymore. It's the Stephen West 2022 Make Along or the MCAL and it's called the Twists and Turns. And I have done one wing. So <laughs> there, I think the last time I was showing you one tentacle and maybe partial of the of a second tentacle, which is this kind of ripply, uh, it's a cable, uh, 
cable twist, twister cable, and it runs in this lime green colour all the way up. But since then I've done the whole uh, ribbing section and changing up of colours for the one wing. There it is there. I love the yarn and how it's working up. The colours are mixing really nicely. Uh, that speckle in here in between the darker uh, choice of colour is really giving me some sort of rustic quality and how green sometimes is the colour that brass turns when it sort of corrodes and I like that weathered look in that in, in that negative space here between the darker lines. So again, you've seen all the rest. I've got to do the other wing here. So this is the tentacle that I finished that was not finished in the last one. And yeah, I got this little bit. So that's what it looks like and how that little tentacle is being attached. So yeah. I love it. I love it. I love the learning of what's going on and <laughs> it's going to look really strange with this big fat pom-pom hat, but uh, oh, I like it. I like the way it's playing with all the different striping and rhythms and yeah, it's great. Yeah. What do you think? So the yarn that I'm using, I've mentioned this a few times now, but for those who have just arrived and have come to visit, I want to show you for the newcomers what the yarn was. So this was my main colour. It is the West Yorkshire Spinners exquisite line that they have, and it is in the colour Bayswater. Really, really lovely yarn. I love the sheen on it. The twist is beautiful. It shows a little bit of it up when you're working. So when it's touched and felt, it looks like it's suede. To me, it looks like suede. And this is that nice rustic feel, weathered look, almost like a corrosion that comes out with all the speckles. But this is uh, the Madeleine Tosh light merino yarn, and it's a single ply, and the colorway is called Herbology. One of a kind, although it's quite strange enough, there were two Hanks that were gifted to me and I had enough for the project. So that is my contrast color. Then my accent color here is getting stuck. That was not me, that was the box. I was, the yarn got stuck. <laughs> so this one here is from Nitpicks and it's Vitalana. Vitalana in the colorway called Walking Dead. I love this color. It's like a highlighter green, a tennis ball. That's what I call it. In Australia, we have some highlighter green tennis balls. So that kind of reminds me of a tennis ball. And those are the three yarns that I'm using. Moving along, I have one crochet started whip that I began, you haven't seen this one yet. And it was one of my dream crochet items that I was thinking of trying out over the course of, I guess, before the end of the year. And I got to it. It is the Triangular Scarf Luconi. That's it there. And the designer, I believe, I don't have a name here. It says here, Claudia Repchit. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but I'll include the link down below. This was a paid for pattern uh, on through the Etsy store. And I can't remember, recall how much it was, but it's got the chart with it. It's got easy to follow instructions where you can check off what row you're on, which is a lovely feature. And it has, uh, the photos are great because sometimes when I'm reading acronyms or reading a pattern, I need to have the photo and the chart helps as well. So I did learn something new on this pattern and here it is here. Not much done. I think I've, I'm on row 13 or something. And 
the thing that I learned was the popcorn stitch. I didn't know how to do that. So yeah, I watched a YouTube channel to figure it out and see how the popcorn stitch is done. And the way that the designer has the popcorn stitch, it's in between uh, post front post stitches. So it looks lovely in um, frame, uh, lovely in frame. So I do love that learn there. That was a great learn. What yarn am I using? That's, that's gonna look really nice. I'm using uh, the yarn from Stanley, and I purchased this from Pleta Yarns, which is a Bulgaria yarn company. And it's the vegan yarn, vegan cake. The color is a number, but there it is there in case you're looking for it. It's 2004. It goes through this sort of lime green. It's looking like it's getting a little cooler and deeper in color as it transitions to orange, red, and then later on to blue. There aren't enough yards in this to complete the pattern because the pattern calls for 1100 or 1200 yards. And this cake here has, uh, oh no, it does, it says 1200 meters. So I have enough. I'm surprised. One thing that I did wrong with this yarn was the pull tab was on the larger end of the base of the yarn. So you're meant to feed the yarn this way. But for some reason, I pulled it from the narrower side. And as I'm working through the yarn, just for the middle, uh, for, for the start of it, lots of clumps came out and they all got tangled and the yarn was so dry, it was knotting up even before I got a chance to kind of like untangle it. Uh, so that that's one thing about the yarn from the vegan collection that I'm noticing is that it does tangle quite easily. It does split a little bit. I would give it probably a, for your friendly factor of crocheting with, perhaps maybe a three out of five for friendly factor. I'm not, um, not super either way, like thrilled with it or totally devastated by it. It's kind of like in the middle. Yeah, I do like the colors though. And I'm using a crochet hook of 3.75 millimeters. Now that I'm set to go with the happy mail, I push the works in progress aside. They're all done. I have some wonderful cards here by a few viewers out there. I want to say thank you and showcase. Now I did already reach out to them to say thank you for their wonderful gifts and cards, but I want to show them here on video and they agreed for me to, to flag them. So this is the first one here. It is card from Judy and Judy has a YouTube channel, which I'll link down below. It's called Judy's Creations in Crochet. Hi Judy. And it says on the front here, greetings of the season. I won't read what Judy has inscribed here, but I'll read the inside of the card. May your holidays bring joy to your home that will last all year. Thank you, Judy. Love it. I'll actually put that up here on the mantle when I'm done. And this card here comes from Elaine and it's the peanut card. I like Snoopy and Charlie Brown. There's Woodstock and other Woodstocks. Yeah, and again, I won't read the personal inscription, but I will read the what's printed in the card. One of the nicest parts of Christmas is remembering special people like you. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. I love it, love it, love it, love it. The next one I have was a parcel. So this parcel arrived about maybe a week, two weeks ago, and reached out to the people to say thank you so much for this. And this one came from Cheryl. I wanna say thank you, Cheryl, for all of the wonderful goodies. She did spoil me. And I'm just pulling everything out so I can find where the card is, because I did see a card in there, which I won't read, but it's Got a beautiful sentiment in there, which I won't read on camera. I have read the inscription, but um, 
Ah, uh, definitely. I will make something beautiful out of these yarns that you've given. So, oh my goodness, people, people. So they came in uh, organza bags and look what I got. Holy smokes. I got Rowan in a tweed. Oh, that's beautiful yarn. I got two Hanks and they're so squishy. Oh my goodness, that's great for color work. And I can put that into a project which has other tweed as well, but it's called Valley Tweed. Each skein is 50 grams and it has the wool mark on it and the British flag. I can't read the writing. I think I need that magnifying glass. Wait one moment. Okay, I'm back. Where would I be without you, Karen? Thank you so much. So, my poor eyesight. So what we have here is, in the 50 gram Hanks, it is saying here I'm getting approximately 207 meters or 226 yards. And I guess that classifies it as a fingering weight yarn. They're suggesting here to hand wash and to lay flat to dry. Recommended needle size is a three and a quarter millimeter. No crochet hook, but I would say maybe the same or even a four millimeter crochet hook would work. Whatever your tension is, give it a go, try it out. It's 100% wool. I love these. The color name is not here, but it does look to be uh, like a straw brown. And inside of the tweed, there's also miles of a little bit of orange and other specks of uh, like a darker brown color. But I love it. I love it so much. Ah, oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And also in this bag was two yarns that I have not heard of before and it's super soft. The color is just magnificent. This one is called uh, Creative, spelt interesting, like C-R-I-A-T-I-V-E. And I got two balls of, or two hanks of that. And it's a DK weight yarn. The color is called 25. So I'm just gonna get this out again and see whether I can give you some more details. A three weight yarn, I'm looking at it upside down. Turn it around. Here we go. Get myself organized. 40% alpaca, 30% cotton, 30% mod model. And then there is like a little Ah, like it's registered, the name. The, uh, the, the suggestion here on the label is to use 4.5 millimeter uh, knitting needles or a crochet hook of 4.5 or 5.5 millimeters. Really lovely. I love that color. You see, I'm branching out in my colors because I normally don't tend to get the purples or the oranges. And in the next few little showcases that I'm gonna uh, unveil, I have a lot of these types of colors that I'm gonna share in the reveals, but this is super, super stinking soft. I love it so much. Ah, oh, that's a dream. Thank you, thank you so much, Cheryl. But wait, that's not all. In this organza bag, also from Cheryl, came in the same parcel with these two lovelies. This one here is a knit crate yarn and it is Vitalana Oasis. That's the tag, tag there. It's wonderfully soft. Oh, and it has speckles going through it. Like not a, it's not like a solid flat color. It has blotches of other colors that make it really interesting. And let's take a look at this yarn here. It is called Nevada. And 
It's 50% alpaca wool, 25% Peruvian Highland Merino wool blend, and 25% Suri alpaca. It's considered a DK weight, 100 grams, offering up 252 yards or 230 meters, hand washed gently, lay flat to dry. It's made in Peru, and their suggestion here on knitting needles is a 3.4 to 4 millimeter or a 4.5 to 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. So lots of information there. I absolutely love it. Wow. It's, it has no, it has, oh, I don't know. It's how to describe it. That, that uh, halo that it has is very soft, not itchy, so it doesn't pull on my skin and it would offer so much warmth, especially now when it's, we're getting to minus seven next week. That's uh, a rec kind of like, I would say almost the coldest temperature recorded for us this season. And um, yeah, something nice and alpaca inspired with the warmth would be great. Thank you. And in the bag, we have a Dahlia from Hobie with the easy pull tab here. And these are the colors. Wow, that is beautiful. The funny thing was I was on Hobie's site and looking at review yarn to pick. Dahlia was one of mine on the pick. Uh, but I had a chance to review three and I chose other yarns. So this present here that I'm gifted is definitely going to come in good use because I really wanted to try the difference between the Hobie cakes that they have. There's so many lines of, they've got the Sultans, the Big Twist or Twist Deluxe and the Dahlia as well. And I'm seeing here now that this is the ply, the four strands that run together. And oh, let's take a look at this yarn here. It feels like a regular cotton yarn. Uh, really lovely, vibrant colors. It is considered a two weight yarn and 100% cotton, 200 grams, offering up 800 meters or 874 yards. Knitting needle suggestion is 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter and crochet hook is 3.5 to 4 millimeters. And the care instructions is that you can machine wash this, but uh, lay flat to dry, designed in Denmark and made in India. A wonderful, wonderful yarn. Look at those colors. Absolutely love it. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy many, many hours with the gifts and the beautiful, beautiful yarn. The next gift that I got came in a box and in the box was multiple different gifts for me and my husband, Chad, and it came from Penny Bolton. Hi, Penny. Some of the contents of this box have been eaten. So I tried my best to keep the wrappers so that you can see what we enjoyed and there was kind of a theme to the box. I could see that the chocolates from this company and running through to a story. So I loved the curated style of this present. And this is the chocolate factory or the chocolate company called Snowflake Chocolates or Chocolatiers. And it is this wonderful selection of, they're all gone by the way, Penny. They were amazing. They were whipped up mousse style chocolates that had harder casings and the whipped mousse had the chocolate base, but flavored chocolate. So there was a raspberry, there was uh, the chestnut or hazelnut style, and then there were other fruit flavored in inspired uh, whipped up mousse. And me and Chad restricted ourselves to have three a night each we lasted for about four nights, I believe, because it was jam packed with all those wonderful little chocolates. Loved it so much. So we kept that box so that we could show 
what it was that this amazing uh, gift came in. Another thing that we have here is the maple pretzels, half eaten. We've already opened up the package <laughs> and enjoyed this when we were watching some of the movies that I'm going to be talking about later on uh, to share with you on some Christmas themed or holiday themed movies. And this is equally delicious, not too sweet, which is amazing. Uh, so that, that was helpful for us to have a few more in our snacks. A, a book, an illustrated book, which talks about the snowflake uh, Bentley. And this is the front cover here. I haven't read the story yet, but I was going to get Chad to read it to me now. He's broken off from his work and he's on his uh, winter break. So he's going to be reading me this story this weekend and I can give you an update on the story and show you some of the wonderful illustrations in the next episode that I plan to do for a catch up and that will be in January sometime. So I love that, I love that. I got a whole box of cards here as well which says warmest wishes and happy holiday for a season of peace and joy. So I've already sent out my cards, but in case I have like a uh, need to send out more, I've got a whole pack here as well. Um, so thank you, Penny, for that. There was a little box of uh, buttons like Cho chocolate buttons that had sprinkles on them of different colors and we ate those already. They were wonderful. Oh, I'm so sorry. There was a card in here too. I've done the the sinful thing and not shown the card. Oh, that's so insensitive. But this is the card that Penny sent and this is little Gwyn. Look how cute. I love the cards that I get, Penny. I always get a sense of uh, finding out a little bit more about the family that are in your household and little Glenn, Gwen is so cute. So it says, Merry Christmas, wishing you many blessings in the year ahead. Penny, Gwen and Missy Bolton. So Missy's the cat. I won't read the back, I'll keep it personal. I, I mean, I have read it, but I'm not gonna read it here on the video. Thank you so much. Other things, look at this. This is like hard boiled candy. And it's got on the back here, it's called Snowflake Chocolates. Oh, it's actually, maybe it has peanut butter inside, molasses, salt, and sugar. Of course, it has sugar in it. But can't wait to get into those as well. Thank you so much. The color is beautiful too. Got some sticks in here for when I want to have something a bit more savory and not so sweet. And these are beef sticks from Vermont or Vermont. And that's the area. So that's good to have a little bit of a taste from the area that Penny's in. I have some cooking to do, I see here. Uh, I have some baking things to maybe batter up and this is this looks like cornbread. It's called cornbread muffin mix. Wow, and it comes in the shape of a corn. Thank you so much. Mm, it's well packed and well con concealed. I feel that there's like an, an extra plastic bag in there of all the content. So it's not gonna break out or you know, get spoiled by dampness. Oops. And <gasps> snowflake chocolate. Yum. That's definitely going to be eaten over Christmas. Another baking type thing. It's called blueberry muffin mix. That's perfect because there's only two of us here. So that might make two healthy size muffins 
when I'm baking up maybe that cornbread, if I, if I have to use the oven for it, I can make up some muffins as well. I love the packaging as well. Well, really well thought, thought out packages. Now this one here is also from Vermont Snowflakes and a little box. I know what's in here because I've already opened it, but I love it. I love it so much. It is going to go on my Christmas tree. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, ornate snowflake. I love it. And in the middle there, it's got the year 2022. The back of it also has the embossing. So it's not just on one side, but it's on both. I'm going to put that on my tree right here. There we go. I'll put the year side out. That is beautiful. And a little bit about it. So there's the card there. I love it. Thank you so much, Penny. So sweet. Put that back in there. Got some extra packing. I don't think that they're... Nope, that's just the packing. Yes, and you guessed it, there is yarn in the box as well. And all of these yarns are from Knit Crate. And I believe I don't have any of these yarns. So what we have is Vitalana Celestial is one collection. Vitalana Tweedy Sheep. And then we have All Dane Wool's Mallow. And yes, I believe there are none that I have ever felt before. So this one here, the Vitalana Tweedy Sheep, is called Spiced Cranberry, 90% wool, 10% Donegal, Donegal, Neps, and it's an Aran weight in the 100 grams. I get 150 yards or 137 meters. It says to hand wash and to dry flat. Let's see what recommendation they give on needles and hook. So it is saying here 4.5, 5.5 millimeter knitting needles or 5.5 to 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. And it is uh, made in Peru for knit crate. I love it. It's a bit of a tweed festivity box uh, and yarns that I got from Cheryl as well as from Penny. So I'm super happy to try it. And then the Aldine Wools is in the colorway Mimosa. Hmm, I thought Mimosas were orange, but uh, this is the color here. It's got a nice sheen to it. Very, very soft. All of them are soft. And this one is made up of 80%, I'm gonna say this really poorly, Hayakea or Huakea, Alpaca, and 20% Tensel. It's a bulky weight yarn and in the 100 gram hank there is 125 yards or 114 meters. It is also a yarn that is produced in Peru, I think. Yes. Recommended needle size and crochet hook is 6.5 to 9 millimeter knitting needles and a 6.5 to 9 millimeter crochet hook. Washing instructions are wash gently and I'll oh, hand wash gently and dry flat. It's super nice. I love it. I love it a lot. And this one here is equally beautiful. I love it. It is the Vitalana Celestial. And the color of this one is called... Diemos. Diemos. I don't know. It sounds Greek to me. It's all Greek. And in this one is 90% alpaca, 10% tensile, and it's considered an Aran weight yarn. Very fine Aran weight, I think. 100 grams gives me 150 yards or 137 meters. Maybe I could put all these together because they're kind of the same yardage. 
and it is also made in Peru. They're saying to hand wash gently and lay flat to dry. The knitting needle size suggestion is 4.5 to 5.5. Crochet hook suggestion is 5.5 to 6.5 millimeters. So yes, they're all comparatively comparatively the same weight and recommendation for needles, but I would say that this is probably the thinnest of the yarns. And then this one is pretty thick and has a great twist to it. And this one here is also a thick weight yarn with beautiful nubs in it or specks or flex. I love them all together. They actually would work up really nice. Thank you, Penny. I love that. Love that so much. I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all the people who have sent me something uh, in the post. Cards, wonderful gifts, food, the yarn. Oh, yeah, I treasure everything that you send me. It's never expected. I never ask for anything. So I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It just touches me and I will treasure all of these things. Some of these yarns I might not have ever got the chance to touch or feel or use. So I am blessed and I really appreciate everyone who watches the videos and makes comments as well. So you make my 2022 a fabulous year, so I want to say thank you so much. And I'm going to move on now to talk about what me and my husband Chad have been up to in this community. I have some excursions to cover and some movies that I'm going to suggest for the season. And if you want to stick around, that's great. If you're just here for the yarny goodies that were all up front, I want to say thank you for joining in and have a safe and pleasant end to your year. I will now talk about the excursion. So about two weeks ago, Hubby and I jumped in the car. We wanted to get out of the house for a little bit. It seemed like we've been insulated here for a couple of days in the home because it's been so cold and snowy and kind of a nice to begin with, but then it just gets, you know, seeing the same four walls all the time. So it was time for us to have an adventure. So we jumped in the car. We wanted to go get some treats at a place that we uh, visited called Coombs and there was a bakery called Trees Bakery. Now, oh, the breakfasts there are amazing. Uh, we needed our sustenance, so I didn't have any pie, although I do take some video shots of the pie selection, uh, which one day I might go back and try some of the pie. Uh, but we had eggs, Benny, and I believe I had the salmon, and Chad had the Florentine, which is the spinach-based one. And uh, I'll add some photographs in here and some footage of those wonderful cakes and come back and tell you about the rest of the day. So did you get hungry just looking at the racks and racks of all those wonderful muffins and tarts and pies? Ah, yeah, I could daydream about that all day. And But we had to move on because the time was pressing light here in, in the days done by around five o'clock in the afternoon. So at this point, we're look, now looking at like 11, 12, and we still had some journeying to do. We ended up driving from Coombs down to a place called Cedar. And this place is maybe around 13 to 15 kilometers outside of Nanaimo. And there was a specific store we wanted to go to tucked away in a little garden, kind of like a Hobbitsville. And uh, we went to a gallery called Golda, Jolda, sorry, Jolda Gallery, spelled J-O-L-D-A. And it was all these ornate blown glass objects. Most of them were for the tree at this time of year, but there are larger ones like color vases and different platters. Beautiful work by the artist called Ted Jolder. And so we actually, whilst in there, the artist was selling all of his wares at the register. 
we have visited his gallery once before a few years back and we purchased this ornament back there about, I don't know, maybe six, maybe five or six years ago. And yeah, so they were still making the curling rock ornament and we wanted to go back and get some curling rocks for gifts. And they were, they were there. We were delighted that they still were being made, but wonderful ornaments. I have footage that I'll share with you. There are glass fruits such as apples and pears, pomegranates. We uh, enjoyed the space that all the, all those ornaments were around and I've got those videos. I'll add them in here. Here we are at the Jolder Gallery and Gardens in Cedar, and we're here to see the glasswork of the artist Ted Galder. So what did you think? Pretty neat, a little tucked away cottage and such a, a magnificent wonderland of different ornaments. We really like the spirit of Christmas going in there as well and enjoying and soaking up all of those wonderful colours. Then we ended up getting back in the car and it was maybe around two or three and you could see that the sun was getting quite low on the horizon and we still had two hours to get back. So we jumped back in the car, we headed way, right back to home and made it before the sun set. It was a beautiful drive and a great day out. So I hope you enjoyed the excursion. Now I'm going to be moving on to talking about films that I can recommend, which have holiday themes in them. I believe that all of these were on Netflix. So what I've got writ written down here is Spirited. Now that's with Will Farrow and uh, Ryan Reynolds and it's a modern adaptation of the Grinch story and there's music in there so there's they sing and they dance <laughs> it's pretty much a full production I would say I enjoyed it uh, I like the classic tale better but this has a nice kind of flair to it that you know entertains you for the two hours that it plays and the other one that I have here is called Last Christmas now I don't know any of the actors' names. I do know that the main character was the dragon queen or the dragon uh, mother from Game of Thrones. And I love the story so much. There was a twist in it. It made me kind of tear up at the end. And it's a modern story. So there's this lady who, or this main character that works in a, a Christmas store as an elf and she sells all these goods to people who come in looking for the Christmas kind of spirit and um, gifts and all that sort of stuff. So it's her kind of like uh, moving around in life during the holidays in London and there's a nice twist to the end of the story, a little sad, but um, yeah, you'll enjoy it, I'm sure. Let me know if you do watch them, what you think. And also, if you've seen them before, let me know what you thought of them. With that, I think that catches you up on everything. I've had so much fun sitting here by the tree and, you know, doing a film from a different part of the house. And I do have to go upstairs, though, to this weekend sometime to organise everything and crank out. How many do I have left? I have seven scarves still to crank. I have one that's sort of half done and it's in Lion Brands, uh, what is it, the Tweedy one? Lion Brands Tweed Stripes and it's working out really nice. The colorway is called Himalaya, or no, it's not called Himalaya, it's called Buddha and I love the mix of the colors and how it's turning out. So in the next episode, which will be hmm, January when I do show and tell, I'm going to have to do a recording of the last seven in a documented form and then I have to give those presents over at Christmas. So you'll be seeing a photo shoot that I do or some sort of movie compilation as I'm making the last seven. So that will be revealed in January. Anyway, 
I got to get going. I hope that you have a pleasant evening and a great weekend ahead. I'm not sure when this video is going to pop out, but um, I'm hoping sometime this weekend. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.